Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Shh. The tractor's napping. It's all covered in blankets. That's what Hillary says when she comes out here in the evening to lock the doors and sees the tractor this way. It's to protect it from the dust while I'm cleaning it. In this episode of the Farm All Super Sea Restoration, we're going to start getting batches of parts all cleaned up, painted, and put back on the tractor. And I started with the clutch and brake pedals here and the linkages. I've got them all cleaned up, ready to paint. And over here we have the fan and pulleys and the water outlet that goes on the head and all of the fan parts laid out and cleaned, ready to put back together. Unlike your typical old car or even old tractor, the water pump is not located behind the fan on this tractor. The water pump is completely separate from the fan and it has a really interesting lubrication system. So the fan's mounted on the water outlet here and this pin goes through and on here and then the fan mounts off of the end of this body and there's no bearings in it. Well, there's no bearings like you would think of. There's no ball bearings. In fact, there's no replaceable bushings either. It all relies on this doohickey here. Let me show you how it goes together. So this is the pulley assembly and it's got this interesting space in here and this is actually an oil deflector inside and this is the oil fill hole in the side where you lubricate the whole thing when you do your oil changes and tune-ups on the tractor. This shaft with this spiral groove in it goes right in here and sets in there and then this piece sets in that And then this funky seashell, <laughs> I call it, sits inside that and I can tell by the witness marks on it that it sat that way. It's real important to get this going the right way. So what's happening here is when you change the oil and fill this, what you do is you take this screw off here, you squirt oil in to the level of this when it's horizontal like this, and then after you do that, you're supposed to turn it to the bottom here and let excess oil drain out. So every time you do that, you're doing a partial oil change in this thing. So the running oil level is like this. But since this pulley is rapidly spinning around, this oil, some of it gets flung by centrifugal force out toward the edge of the pulley. And then you've got kind of a pond of oil that's always riding on the bottom as the pulley rotates. This shaft here doesn't fit in this tight. There's no seal or anything, and it relies on that centrifugal force and this oil flinger here to keep oil from going out the back and weeping all over the engine. So here's how this all works. This shaft is in here, and then you'll see that this kind of fits down over that oil deflector, oil flinger, slinger, whatever you want to call it. If you put this together and put the seashell on it, <laughs> what goes on after this is the lid to this whole thing so what happens in this little cavity here is you've got oil being slung out by centrifugal force out all around this and as the pulley turns this thing is scooping up oil because remember it's trapped in there against the cover it's scooping up oil and pressure it's forcing it into this groove in here and if you look at the underside of the groove here it goes in and, and goes right around that shaft and then if you look at the shaft on the end of the shaft that oil gets sent into this groove right here and the oil spirals all the way down the shaft lubricating this whole shaft running inside this sleeve. Now this whole mess is really complicated. I mean you could have replaced it with two ball bearings on a simple shaft and maybe you would put grease circs in the ball bearings so you could have grease them every time you change your oil. I have no idea why they're this complicated but it's held up good so I guess that's one sign of good design otherwise I just don't know. So anyway after all that jibber jabber <laughs> let's put this thing back together. I had to make a couple gaskets for it. Um, one goes in here. So let's get that set in. This piece goes in first with its little gasket. Then we can put this shaft through. I put a little engine assembly lube on it. 
put the seashell on, get it the right way around, then this nut goes on to secure that. And this gasket goes on. We got to get everything lined up here. And then the cover goes on. Then the fan goes on on top of that. We got eight bolts here. Make sure they all go through. So you've got bolts going all the way through, all the way through here. And poking out the bottom since this is only made out of tin sheet metal you've got these thicker brackets that go under here and are threaded to tighten the bolts down with oh well, come here there's four of them I got to put on you just take one of them put them underneath and then kind of feel around to get the bolts started tighten them all down so here's the finished fan assembly spins nice whoops just the middle part spins and then this is the water outlet that goes on the tractor. This goes together like this. <laughs> and then all the bolts fall out. And then you use this to adjust the belt tension. There's this big nut on the back of the shaft. And the whole thing slides up and down like this. So you can adjust your belt tension. Then when it's tight, it rides like that. Simple as can be. I took this all apart because I've never had one apart before and I kind of wanted to see how it worked. There was nothing wrong with it. It also made it easier for me to clean up all the nooks and crannies around in the fan and things for painting. Well, it's been a few days. I've been busy cleaning parts, so I've got everything hung and ready to paint. And I concentrated on getting the brakes and the clutch all ready to put back on, paint those up, and then the front end of the tractor, the radiator, the fan, the water pump, the alternator, getting those all hooked up. Things like the fan shroud here, those are fun to clean. The water pump's all ready to paint. Took this apart, put a new gasket in it. Just wanted to see how it looked inside, make sure everything was tight, and it's good. Of course, the fan and the belt pulley, which I showed you before. Radiator brace. The mount for the front cowl, and this is where the crank goes through it. Pedals, springs, all the brake stuff here. More pedals, water outlet in the head, clutch linkage, bolts for the radiator, more brake parts, and the vent that goes on the top of the engine. So I'll get the primer loaded into the gun, and we'll get to work. It's two days later, the heat's been on the shop the whole time, the parts are nice and dry, it's time to start putting stuff back together. First we gotta uncover the tractor.
I think I'll start right here with the water pump. I gotta take this masking tape off the opening. This is my favorite part of the entire process, putting nice shiny new parts onto a nice shiny new tractor. This bolt's kind of giving me fits, but I got lots of patience when I'm putting things like this together. Next we can put this top water outlet on. Get the tape off here. This bracket guides the crank through to the crank pulley here and then it's got a bolt on it for the front cowl to secure that. Next I'm going to put the cooling fan on but I think first I want to get the belt worked under here because it's kind of a tight squeeze to get it seated and it's easier with the fan off. Oh, it goes around the water pump here. There we go. And then I can work the fan on. This is the alternator belt. It goes behind the fan belt so we kind of work it through here. Like that. Get that set in. Go nut to hold the fan on back here. Kind of hard to reach. Tensioning the belt consists of raising the fan pulley with a pry bar. Get it as tight as you can. Whoops. New paint. And then tightening the knot on the other side. And tightening I mean, usually is to the right hand side. That is good. This is the top radiator support. We're just going to put it on loosely until we get the radiator set in place. Next comes the alternator with its bracket. I forgot to paint the bolts so I'll paint those later on with a brush. I prefer alternators on old tractors to be unpainted but opinions will definitely differ on that subject. This is just temporary. I'll have to flip this back down to put the manifold on later on. But it's on there. I would say this is the crowning achievement. Yep. Yep. Well, it's not straight. There we go. Now it's straight. I have a new radiator here that needs to be dressed before it can be put on the tractor. Here it is. I buy my new radiators from Northern, not Northern Tool, Northern Radiator, and I've always had good luck with them. This one came without an overflow pipe on it, so what I did is I sweated the old overflow pipe off the old radiator and then made a hose connection up here for it and made these brackets to secure it to the new radiator housing. we got to put these bolts in first. Here's a shroud. Fortunately the radiator can be installed on this tractor with the shroud on it. Different from some other tractors I've worked on. Well we gotta get this to fit. Where are you hanging up? You gotta go in here. I don't want you guys to fall out again. Oh, I missed the bracket. Now we can hook up the drain pipe. I put this in here because my thing was too short. This has got a barb on here, so that's not going to come off. It's just overflow. And then I'm going to orient this pipe clamp here so that it doesn't interfere with the sheet metal up above. 
Onward to the brakes. This is the brake locking pedal here and it's just got this pin in underneath that slides in to lock it. And you gotta get the holes lined up for the cotter pin. Next we can start on pedals here. First thing that goes on is this washer which sets inside the transmission case. Then we have a key that goes in the shaft here. And the key's here because this shaft goes all the way through the transmission. This pedal is going to lock onto this key because it's the left brake pedal. So it's going to work the left cylinder. And then this pedal that's got the keyway on it goes on. And I oiled it up to give it a little bit of extra help here. And that's the ratchet that attaches to this brake lock right here when you lock the brakes on. We'll line up the key. There we go. We're going to leave that here for the time being. Now before I put this other pedal on, there's a boot that goes on here. Oh, which we gotta get positioned correctly. There we go. Now we can put on the second brake pedal, the right brake pedal. It just slides on because this one rotates on the shaft. And then this is the spring and the actuating shaft for the brake. So you take this back and hook it into the brake linkage here and tighten it up some. We'll adjust them later after we get everything hooked together. That's good enough for now on the pedal travel. Next this washer goes on, or bushing goes on, on the outside, and then we have a snap ring that holds it all together. I just love putting on snap rings. I gotta go get a screwdriver. There we go. Then the final thing on this side is to hook up the spring, and this is what holds the spring on the brake drum here, this little plate. Oh, and I almost forgot we got another spring on the other brake pedal to put on. It goes in there. Alrighty, now the clutch side. First the clutch pedal goes on the shaft. And then we have another key, and this is the left hand brake actuator coming through from the other side. And then here's the brake actuator itself, whatever you want to call it. I call it brake actuator. It's got to go on the key. There we go. Then we have another spring here to hook onto this clutch. Holds that up. And tighten up this pinch on here. Tighten it around the shaft. Okay. Let's get the clutch linkage set up here. And this is where you adjust the clutch free play with this rod. And what we want here is this clearance from the platform to the edge of the clutch to be 1 and 7 16 before the clutch starts to engage. So if we put this pin in here, just as a test. Now that I have the feel of the clutch, I can tell, see I've got two and three quarters, so I need to lengthen this rod some. I don't have a lot of length in the left in it, but we'll see what we can do. And to lengthen it, we just spin this. I think I got it where I want it. If I put the tape measure there, I've got well, about one and a half. It's close enough, I think. That's good. And to finish this job, we just got a set of cotter pins that go in and hold this pin in on this end. 
get in there. And then we have one at the clutch pedal. Then I just got to tighten up the jam nut. I'm sure I'll have to readjust this once I get it running. You don't. You want to make sure the clutch isn't depressing too far in. You can push in the clutch too far. So when you're done adjusting, you want the throw out bearing to the fingers that I showed up from underneath that distance to be about three sixteenths of an inch when the clutch is all the way back. And then when you depress the clutch, the fingers will press on the springs and allow the clutch plate to spin freely. That's all there is to that. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the brakes. You want this to be one and one eighth to one and three eighths. This kind of pedal free travel before you get a lot of resistance with your hand. And these got to be tightened up. That one's one and seven eighths. That one's right where I want it to be. That one's one and three sixteenths. One and three sixteenths. That one's about the same. The best way to adjust these after you have it running is to really is to jack up the rear end and put it in road gear, lock the brakes together, hit the brakes and see if the wheels stop at the same time. That way it'll keep it from pulling to one side or the other if you're in road gear and you hit the brakes. These are good enough for now. The last thing I got in this batch of parts and I've been waiting for the grand finale, well not actually just worked out that way, is to put the radiator on and put the radiator on, I got to put the thermostat on. I tested the old thermostat that was in it and, you know, a cup of hot water. It didn't open very well, so I had to wait a couple days to get a new one. That's why I'm doing it at the end. But let me show you how these work. Different from the larger tractors, this doesn't have a bypass. The thermostat sits right here in the coolant outlet, and there's no bypass around it to circulate water from the water pump down here into the engine when the engine's cold, when before the thermostat opens. And that's just the way it is. That's the way they've always run. Now, this thermostat is a little bit of an odd duck. Originally, the thermostat that came on these had a wide flange that came down here, and it sat down in this opening. If you're replacing one of these, you have to, with a modern one, you have to get this ring. And fortunately, somebody had done this before I got the tractor. It's a spacer ring that goes down here and sits in a step in the outlet tube. And then the thermostat sits on top of that and then there's a snap ring that holds the thermostat in place like that that's all set to go i'm going to put the hoses on the block end of the radiator assembly first here get them just pushed on here's the top one push that on then put the mounting bolts on the bottom of the radiator these are just carriage bolts that slide into slotted holes in the bottom here and as if we haven't made things hard enough for ourselves already, we have a set of rubber mounting pads that go underneath the radiator to give it a little cushion and flux. And we got to line them up too. Mm, that's fun. All right, let's give this a try. First thing to do is line up the bolts down here, mount it, get them in the holes so they don't fall out. And then we got to work on the lower hose here. There we go. All right, I got the lower hose started. Hopefully we can get this slid in now. All right, that hose is started on. Now we can hook on the brace here that goes onto the radiator. So we get the radiator set where it's supposed to be and then adjust the hose to the right spot. And put the bottom mounting nuts on and the lock washers. You gotta scooch things up a little bit to get the nuts in. There we go. Maybe not that way. And we got the one on the other side. Got to tighten this up. Here we are. Everything's on from this batch. Front's looking good. But the back, well, she still looks pretty bare. The work that you just saw in one video took me a week and a day. And I have a full-time job, you know, out on the farm, so I'm working on this catch as catch can. I don't show a lot of what happens on the video. I spent days cleaning this stuff, probably a day and a half cleaning the parts just for this batch, and it's batch after batch, and I'll start all over again now. Clean off another batch of parts, pay them, put them on the tractor, 
I am by no means even close to being finished. I'm finishing the powertrain, putting, getting the wheels on was a major milestone, but there's a million little parts that all need to be individually cleaned, painted, fit, made sure everything works together right. That's the way it is. It's a good winter job, I guess. I'll have more time coming up as we settle in for the winter. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think in the next one, I'm probably going to concentrate on um, rebuilding the carburetor, getting the manifold on, probably working on the distributor on the opposite side, maybe getting the steering system back on. So stay tuned, and I'll be back with you with further developments on the Super C restoration, which is a giant job. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.